Good morning. Glad that you're all here this morning. I certainly want to, to welcome everyone and to guests who are viewing, uh, excuse me, viewing us online, we want to welcome you as well. Certainly, if you have any questions of a staff member from Advent can assist you in any way, please reach out to us and uh, we will assist you. Uh, uh, just a couple of announcements, actually several announcements this morning for the mission and ministry of our congregation. A reminder that quilting begins this coming Thursday at 9.30 a.m. So quilters, um, you'll be back in the fellowship hall and uh, that will get started on, on Thursday. I invite you to be a part of that. A reminder to mark your calendar. September 22nd is our 40th anniversary celebration. We will have one worship service on that day. And today is the last day to order t-shirts. There's still plenty of ways. Tags back on the board in the Welcome Center. Plenty of ways that you can support that event. So I invite you to be, to be a part of that. Immediately following our worship service, Gary Smith is going to be back in the uh, Welcome Center. He's not going to be selling Snap-on tools this morning. He's going to be selling Lake Township fish tickets. And so if you want to support the Lake Township fish for the benefit dinner, um, he will have tickets. They're $30 per person. And that, that dinner comes up on September 10th. And also at that meeting um, or at that event, you'll probably learn of some exciting things that we're going to be doing over the next six or eight months um, uh, with, with the Lake Township Fish. And so invite you to be a part of that on September 10th. See, um, on, a, um, on a totally different note, this, this morning during our prayers, in worship, we are going to remember the family of uh, Lena Varga. Lena passed away at about 3 o'clock this morning um, at, uh, at the hospital, and I was with the family uh, some yesterday afternoon and early evening, and so we, uh, we will include them in our prayers this morning and invite you to do so during your devotion time. As information comes available about uh, a service or the funeral, you know, we will keep you informed about that. Also, a little bit later in our worship service, probably right after communion, um, Doug Neighbors, our council president, is going to come forward, and so is Terry Lehman. We, uh, Terry, our secretary, uh, as you well know, um, is retiring, and so we want to present her, do a blessing, and present her with the gift that uh, the congregation has provided for her. So we'll do that immediately following um, Holy Communion, and there's also then cake and some items back in the fellowship hall, you know, to celebrate that event. I would invite Doug. Oh. We'll continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. 
Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your words feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your way of truth, that we, pronouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you.
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that, you may not, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. 
With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at, Caper at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason... I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of, of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, you who are our strength and our Redeemer, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you been the giver or receiver of any road rage recently? Um, I th doesn't it seem like that seems to be up? Now, I don't know, um, maybe you've b been giving it, maybe you've received it, but doesn't there seem to be an unprecedented amount of, maybe you could just say, global misery or anxiety or stress into the mix of our lives and the lives of all people? Doesn't it seem that way? But don't you, have you ever thought about that from the standpoint about if there is something like this road rage or that, that, that definitely does happen, this guy cut you off on tra up in the traffic and with some catastrophic, I bet you he's dealing, this person might be dealing with some catastrophic event in his life. Maybe it's loss. Maybe it's something else. Maybe he lost his job. And isn't it true if you think about it, What's happening in our culture when that happens or with the individuals when it, when it happens to us, whether it's giving or receiving, it has nothing to do with the highway, does it? It has everything to do with the person that's initiating that. And today I want to speak for just a couple of minutes about our culture and, and speak about identity, identity. 
This past week I was um, listening to a podcast and doing some reading um, by Pastor Kerry Newhoff and also uh, who is a pastor and, and leadership guru. And, and he was speaking about the way in which that our belief has become identified or maybe even attached to our identity in culture, in our culture today. And he says, we are so divided and polarized on so many issues that it's just amazing. And so as you stop and think about it, our, I, I, our identity, excuse me, is really, you, you would ask yourself the question, who am I, right? Who am I? And, and we've asked this question or should ask this question of ourselves maybe more on a more regular basis. I think it's a question that we've asked since, well, maybe since people have been on the planet. And I think it's becoming a question that we need to more frequently ask ourselves as we become more secularized, secularized as people. And I'm wondering if part of it, part of this reason we're in the position that we are in today is because of the abandonment of many people to Christianity. Because wasn't it true that for centuries and for centuries and centuries, everyone's identity was tied up in, in, their, in their faith, right? And today... Our identity seems to be attaching to many different things. And believe it or not, I think this is one of the things that helps to raise the conflict in our culture. Because sometimes we attach our identity to our work or, or our success, don't we? Or maybe we attach our our identity to our children because, you know, we, my kids have got to be successful. They've got to be number one in sports. They've got to be the best at everything. Your identity, maybe your need for meeting, meaning, excuse me, and also validation. If it's not rooted in the world, right? And if we're not attaching our identity to Christ, we're going to use our identity and attach it just to so many things. You know, originally our identity was formed by discovering what family and neighbors expected of us, receiving feedback and interacting with one another about behavior, rearranging our lives so that we lived within the community of people that we lived in. And in our culture today, God and faith don't seem to be shaping our identity quite as much. And today, you know, we've, we attach our identities to, to maybe positions and ideas on various issues. Because isn't it true that even just with the political stuff, we go back and forth and... and can't stand the opinion of other people because we all say we're right we've got all the information we know what we need and if you think about it if your identity is on what you think on an issue you're smart on an issue why did people cling to their views on masks and vaccines and politics and social issues so passionately Do you see how partisanship has risen and our identity in Christ has declined? It's interesting, um, too, in this study that I was reading, 
that there is a rise of isolation and loneliness in our culture today because of, of way, the way we are as a culture. And the U.S. Surgeon General has declared an epidemic of loneliness and says that it's got serious health implications. It, loneliness, listen to this, loneliness impacts mortality as much as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Think about that. 15 cigarettes a day. Well, you may wonder, well, why, why is this? Because God designed us for relationship with one another. But this generation has fallen out of that healthy, sustained relationship. So think about it. You, you were born and raised of a, of a village of maybe 200 people, acquaintances and, or less. And what did you learn? You learned that everybody had to be able to get along. And this changed drastically in the last century. And more importantly, in the last two decades, social media has even, even made a bigger impact in that. Of all the equipment, I've got a few things this morning that, that fortunately Becky was able to, um, to dig out for me. I've got a breastplate that uh, St. Paul talks about in, uh, in Ephesians. Unfortunately, the hat doesn't fit too well. Um, and I've got a sword. And you know, of all the things that St. Paul speaks about in the Ephesians text today, the sword, the word of the Spirit, is the only device that's used for offense all the other ones are used for defense. And I think that maybe we have lost our identity in Christ Jesus. And I wonder if that's why the world is in, um, in the mix or the mess that it's in. I wonder if, if that's why many of us are maybe feeling frustrated, lonely, isolated, confused. And we've forgotten about our identity in Christ. St. Paul says in that 17th verse of the text for today, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Of all the equipment, of all the equipment, the one weapon for offense is the Word of God. And what would it take for us to be able to open up to the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit will never, ever force its way into our lives. So that you have to become what the Holy Spirit wants you to become. And I think that there's a certain part that we play in yielding to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because I think there's, there's, it's important to understand that there's no way to overstate the Spirit's role in shaping who we are. And I want to just take just a moment and, and briefly go over a few of those things and for the way in which the Holy Spirit beckons us to God. The Holy Spirit leads us to repentance, repentance and faith, changes our hearts, empowers and guides us, comforts and consoles us, whispers and woos us. The Holy Spirit assures us that you and I are children of God. It convicts us and teaches us, fills with, with joy and peace and transforms us into the image of Christ. Throughout Paul's writing, 
He calls all the Christians to be led by the Spirit. That's another way of speaking about putting on lives, you know, putting our lives in control of the Holy Spirit. And, and I've shared with you before, but I think about us being be able to be shaped by the Spirit from a potter's wheel. You know, when you take a lump of clay, when, whenever we're with Rowan, our granddaughter, oftentimes she likes playing with Play-Doh, and she'll put it on the table, and she'll pound on it, and beat it, and roll it out, and, and stuff. But think about the image of the potter's wheel that that's, goes throughout the Holy Scripture, where the Holy Spirit on the potter's wheel just molds and shapes and, and helps us to be created in the image of God, right? That the Holy Spirit shapes us. And again, the Holy Spirit never takes us by force. I think the, girl, the, excuse me, the goal of our lives is to surrender our lives to Christ. And we, when we do that, when we do that, we accept His grace and mercy and we begin to follow excuse me, begin to follow him. And maybe we become more and more than like Jesus. And so I'm wondering, and I'm speaking to myself as well, I wonder if I'm growing. I'm wondering if you're growing more like Christ Jesus. St. Paul also uh, speaks about the fruit of the Spirit in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. And he says, this is what the Spirit wants to produce in you. So you can see what the potter is trying to do and to make when he says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it just be fantastic if there was a little bit more of that in our world today? Over the course of our lives, we're called to yield to the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will produce these things in us because I don't know about you, I can't make those things myself. And part of my hope and my prayer for all of us is that Jesus through the Holy Spirit might form and shape me that I might be an instrument of God's grace. Last night as I was walking into the hospital, I was asking God for that power, you know, uh, knowing that I was going into the hospital and, and going to be visiting with Lana and her family. Help me to be an instrument of your grace, oh God. And I think that's what the Holy Spirit calls for us in the course of our lives. As the Holy Spirit works in us across the course of our lives, people see the fruit of the Spirit, will experience the light of Christ, and will be instruments of God's grace in this world. We will be like the clay and the Holy Spirit the potter. And maybe when we get to the end of our lives, we'll actually become what he has made us to be. Amen.
we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God, God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve on juries in their deliberation. Merciful God, God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts. This morning we pray especially for Kelvin Rogers, Patrick Haynes, Peggy Riggle, Scott, Phyllis Novi. Paul, Billy, and all those whose needs are known to us and for those whom we name before you in our hearts. Merciful God. Compassionate God, you destined us for adoption and promise us the gift of eternal life. We pray for the family of Lena Varga as they mourn her death. Give your grace to her entire family as they grieve, that they may find comfort in your presence and be strengthened by your spirit. Merciful God. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. Merciful God, we lift up these prayers to you, O God. Receive them into your holy keeping. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Terry, would you come forward? Doug? Yeah, when you're when you're speaking, do that. Just yeah, yeah. You you come up here with us. You, I'll let you for a minute uh, face the congregation. <laughs> we we we. I didn't want to make this painful for her, but I knew she had to be here for us, right? So she has been for twenty some twenty two, twenty three years. Um, it would it would have been twenty three in February. Twenty three in February. So yeah. <laughs> Well, we wanted to say thank you so very much, and um, it, it sounds as though you won't be retiring. You're going to be doing more difficult work than, uh, she's going to be watching her grandchildren for a little bit, so, so uh, but I'm sure more rewarding, right? But, but we wanted to do um, a blessing and, and, uh, and a farewell prayer, so let's do that, and then I'll, I'll turn things over to Doug for a minute. Terry, as you uh, retire and leave our congregation, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Exodus, the 23rd chapter. The Lord said, I'm going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. When you came to our congregation, we rejoiced to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. You've been a person of of service and dedication and Christ-like compassion. And in this community, you have come to know and share in God's loving purpose for you and for all of creation. And certainly God has blessed us in this community because of your presence. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in the name of Advent Lutheran Church. Unite us with us in the mission that we share. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant Terry, who has enriched our congregation and shared her gifts with family and friends of this place. Now bless and preserve her at this time of transition. Day by day, guide her and give her what she is what is needed. Friends to cheer her way a clear vision of that to which you are now calling her, and by your Holy Spirit, be present in her pilgrimage that she may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. (laughs) Terry. (laughs) Terry, this is going to be something you've never seen. I'm going to be serious. (laughs) It's my honor and privilege to represent the congregation in thanking you for your service to our church, to the Lord, and wishing you a very happy, prosperous, healthy, everything, and enjoy the grandkids' retirement. (laughs) (laughs) Let's give her a round of applause. That being said, the congregation has a little gift for you. Thank you very much. You're going to love it. Thanks, Terry. You're welcome. Thank you. Speech. (laughs) (laughs) No, No, you do. (laughs) It really has been an honor to be here. And I definitely have entered a world that I haven't been in for a while. Like last week was my first week with this. Three-year-old twin grandkids, and I couldn't believe it because they're still sleeping when I get there in the morning. And their room, they have a baby door knob thing, so they because my seven-year-old grandson goes in there and wakes them up, so they put this baby door knob thing on there. I can't get.
Please stand. May the blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journey with us, journeys with us, bless you now and forever. Amen. Terry will be back in the Fellowship Hall as we celebrate uh, with her her retirement. Invite you back there to speak with her. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. <laughs>